Chapter 7 of Bunny Brown and His Sister Sue at Christmas Tree Cove. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Sean McGahey and Sarah. Chapter 7 The Sleepwalker. So quickly did Bunny Brown pull away from his father to run after the strange dog that Mr. Brown had no chance to call to the little boy to be careful sue however who had hold of her father's other hand seemed anxious maybe the dog will bite bunny exclaimed the little girl sometimes splash used to growl if you took a bone away from him and maybe this dog will growl if bunny takes the pocketbook away from him that might happen if the dog had mother's pocketbook replied mr brown but i didn't see him have it and I don't believe Bunny knows for sure, but ever or not, this is the same dog. Maybe if he hasn't the pocketbook in his mouth, he has hid it somewhere. He was going to dig it up just as Splash used to dig up the bones he hid, went on Sue. Let's go and look, Daddy. This was just what Mr. Brown wanted to do, to see what happened to Bunny, who had turned the corner running after the strange dog. So, taking a firmer hold of Sue's hand, Daddy started to run. When they turned the corner, they could see the chubby legs of Bunny working to and fro as he ran along some distance ahead of them. Ahead of him, the big yellow dog was also racing along, and Bunny could be heard calling, Stop! Hold on there! Come back with my mother's pocketbook and her diamond ring! Several persons in the street were attracted by the shouts of the boy and his race after the dog. There'll be more excitement here in a little while than I want, thought Mr. Brown. People will think there has been a theft, and they will join in the chase. Then the dog may get excited and bite someone. I must catch Bunny and stop him from shouting. Now Sue could not, of course, run as fast as could her father, and though her legs worked to and fro in her very best style, Bunny was getting far ahead of them. I'll have to pick you up and carry you, Sue, said her father, and, stooping, he caught her up in his arms. It was easier for him to run fast this way, and he knew he would soon catch up to Bunny. As for the small boy, he was still chasing the dog, and the dog seemed to know he was being chased, for he ran on, looking back now and then, but never stopping. What's the matter, Mr. Brown? asked the man who knew the fish dealer as he saw Sue's father hurrying down the street, carrying her and racing after Bunny. Has anything happened? Oh, not much, was the answer. My boy is trying to catch that strange dog, and I don't want him to. The dog might bite him. That's so, said the man. Stop, Bunny, stop, cried Mr. Brown, getting within calling distance of his little son. Don't run after the dog any more. But I want to get Mother's pocketbook and ring, Sue's brother answered as he slowed up and looked back that dog hasn't it went on mr brown he has nothing in his mouth and oh he has something in his mouth it's red and i can see it sticking out interrupted sue eagerly maybe it's mother's pocketbook bunny it's his tongue declared bunny it's the dog's red tongue you see mother's pocketbook was black well, this dog hasn't it at any rate, went on Mr. Brown with a smile, as he put Sue down on the sidewalk beside Bunny, with whom he had now caught up. And even if this were the same dog, we could not make him understand that we wanted him to take us to the place where he dropped the purse. I'm sure it's the same dog, insisted Bunny, but he's gone now, anyhow. This was true. Just as Bunny stopped after his father called to him the dog ran into an alley between two buildings and though mr brown again holding his two children by the hands looked in there was no sight of the animal yes he's gone agreed mr brown you scared him chasing after him like that you did went on soon to her brother didn't he daddy she asked her father i guess the big dog didn't need much scaring said mr brown are you sure he's the same one bunny of this bunny was quite positive though sue was not so much the animal looked like the one that had snatched the pocketbook off the bench and had run into mr fosdick's carpenter shop with it but that was as far as sue could go the crowd which had started to gather when it saw the chase 
and now it began to separate when it found there was to be no more excitement and mr brown took a short cut through the back streets home with bunny and sue we had a lot of adventures mother said bunny when they reached the house we got adrift on a boat and we had to tow it back and i saw the dog that had your pocketbook and i chased him and 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 i know a riddle about when is a snowdrift like a boat broke in sue not wanting bunny to receive all the attention gracious exclaimed mrs brown what does all this mean she asked her husband did you really get back my pocketbook oh if my ring has been found i'm sorry to say it hasn't her husband said bunny did think he saw the dog that took it but i very much doubt that and what's that about being adrift they were on the ferry and she floated out a little way from the dock that's rather dangerous said mother brown if such things are going to happen it will not be safe for us to go to christmas tree cove oh, oh can't, can't we, we go? go cried bunny and sue thinking their mother was going to call off the trip there was no danger their father said and he explained how it had happened it was not the fault of bunny and sue he added the boat might have drifted off with anyone on board but it is strange if that dog should still be around here after running off with my pocketbook went on mrs brown i'm not at all sure it was the same dog her husband said though bunny may have thought it looked the same but did you have any report from mr foswick or bunker blue about their search in the carpenter shop for the pocketbook he asked his wife yes she answered bunker blue and mr foswick looked carefully they swept out the shop which hasn't happened in over a year i imagine but all they found was an old pair of spectacles mr foswick lost six months back bunker was here a little while ago and said there was no use of searching any further he went back to the dock as you told him to it's too bad said mr brown still it can't be helped and it shall not spoil our trip to christmas tree cove can you be ready to start day after tomorrow he asked his wife i think so she answered how many of us are going the children of course and you and uncle tad and i'll send bunker along to help when i'm not there oh aren't you going daddy asked bunny yes i'll start with you mr brown promised but i can't always be with you i shall have to spend part of each week here at my boat and fish dock but bunker will be with you all summer and so will uncle tad i am glad he's going exclaimed bunny he'll be lots of fun so will captain ross added sue he can ask awful funny riddles during supper the plans for the summer vacation at christmas tree cove were talked over the children becoming more and more jolly and excited as they thought of the fun ahead of them after the meal bunny and sue went out in the yard to play george watson harry bentley and charlie star had a race of bunny while mary watson sadie west and helen newton brought their jumping ropes and the four little girls had a great game of course bunny and sue told about the coming trip and naturally all the other children which they could call maybe we can come up on a picnic and see you said hare oh i hope you can exclaimed sue mr and mrs brown sat on the porch in the evening glow watching the children at play and talking over about what it would be necessary to take on the little voyage which would start aboard the ferry every once in a while miss brown would give a sigh are you thinking of your lost pocketbook her husband asked i am thinking more of my lovely engagement ring she answered it is too bad he agreed but never mind perhaps it may be found no i'm afraid it never will be she went on you had better come into the house now she called to bunny and sue it's getting late and you'll have plenty to do tomorrow to get ready for the trip to christmas tree cove bunny and sue said good night to their playmates and were soon ready for bed their father and mother sat up a little later they were about to retire when a noise on the stairs caused them to look out into the hall there was bunny in his blue pajamas coming down the stairs his eyes were wide open but they had a funny look in them i know where it is he said the dog has it on his tail what asked mr brown what do you mean bunny what has the dog on his tail 
Mother's diamond ring was the answer. I'm going to get it. The dog is asleep on the shavings in the carpenter shop. Bunny came down a few more stairs, and his mother, looking at him, exclaimed, He's walking in his sleep! End of chapter 7